You said you like to read. You know, it seems like the novelist is sort of a lost art almost. You know, you think about like Sal Bellow or Philip Roth or Norman Mailer, like during the, the 60s, 70s, like those were the rock stars, sort yeah. of the, these, these provocateurs. And now it seems like so much has been because it's the, the, the moving image. But do you still enjoy, uh, you know, like fiction or what are you reading to sort of stimulate your mind? Yeah, I do. I, I read, um, I still enjoy a lot of fiction. I read you know, everybody from, yeah, I mean, my bookshelf is right there. <laughs> so, I mean, I've got, I read everybody from like Norman Mailer, Henry Miller, Charles Bukowski, you know, Ferdinand Celine, Jim Thompson, you know, everything, it's a wide range of, I read a lot of philosophy like Sartre and Baldriard and Virilio. So, it, it, when I'm not writing, I'm reading. And when I'm not reading, I'm writing. So, I'm, but I do think it's a lost art, and I wish it wasn't. Right, yeah. Because yeah. I always wish, you know, I, I try to even read some of my favorite s screenplays. You know, I, I wish that those were published. I mean, I have Paul Schrader's book that has Taxi Driver and Light Sleeper and American Gigolo, and I think those are incredible pieces of literature. They're just in screenplay format. So it's just a different language that has adapted now because the novelist is kind of dead, you know, in a way. I mean, I wish it wasn't, you know, Murakami's still great. I love Murakami. So there's, there's a lot of great authors still writing now. And it's interesting, too, how those writers at the time, I'm thinking of like Philip Roth, like he wrote, you know, about this young man growing up in the suburbs and certain things. And it was so offensive to certain people that you know, just, just today, by today's standards, it would be so tame. Yeah. But, I mean, some of those people, it drastically changed their lives. So much so, I think he moved to Connecticut to get away from some of the, the hype. But now, it almost seems with, with filmmaking, the shock value, you want to up it. Because then, I don't, I don't know, it's just interesting. that Like, I wish novel writing would come back in terms of the love of it and generations would want to get lost in a book. I do too. I really do. Yeah. There's, there's something that's so beautiful about a novel. It's holding something in your hand. It's reading, it's words, it's prose. It's, you know, it's, it's just, I don't think there's anything else like it. It's a very intimate way of being with a story. Yeah. Whereas a movie, it's great, and I, I love watching a film in the theater with other people and taking it in and see where they laugh, see where they kind of get uncomfortable. But reading is, is such an intimate so, I mean, you can really get lost in a book. We don't read a book in a room with a hundred of the people with the lights off. That's how you watch a movie, <laughs> which is a little, you know, it's a, you know, it's a sociological thing that all these people go into one dark room and watch a screen and nobody talks and they all experience the same thing at the same time differently. And then they, the lights come on and that time's over and they walk out and talk about it. Sure. But they all experience this one hour and 30 to two hour period of time where they're alone in their chair, separated from others, experience something by themselves, the same way that you kind of read, but in this way, you're, there's a start and a stop to it, and that's it, and you're with other people. What is it about Charles Bukowski that you're so attracted to? I mean, in fact, we're not too far from where he lived and worked at the post office, right? Yeah. So what, what is it about him that, because he had a quite rocky life for many years until he had this one patron, I believe, that took care of him. Yeah, you know, I love, you know, I, I just think he, he, he's, uh, he's a new novelist. He's great. He, he had this sense of humor to him. He had this, like, punk rock sensibility. He just wanted to do whatever he wanted. He believed in freedom in a different way. He's kind of like, you know, uh, he, and he had this starch criticism of the world. And that always came out in his work, you know the Postal Service and yeah. his job and his boss and yeah. I mean, he didn't live a happy life. He was an alcoholic and, you know, but right. he wrote great books. That's true. I mean, even, even I think when he found success, even after this patron, you know, and he, he found success, I think it was still, it was still the, those inner demons, but then they play out so beautifully on the page. Or, yeah. And that's, that's the real, like, People want to create this great work, but I think with it comes a little bit of a price. Yeah. You know, and I think people could idolize him and don't know if they would totally want to be him, but. 
But you, so you you admire him. That's interesting because he's not really he's not even of my generation. He's for the generation before me. So yeah, I, I I love his work. He's one of you know many authors that I love. But uh, he's got that ability to throw daggers at the way the world is a little bit, kind of like Hunter S. Thompson. They both have this like particular viewpoint that only they have. Sure. And I think it's the same way when you watch, you know, filmmaker by a great movie by a great filmmakers. You're watching their view, their vision. So I think some great novelists of the '70s had that vision, and it came through in their work.